Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, August 12th, and today is the Monday recap where we talk about where we stand heading into this week for Tesla, Coney, and Vidi, and Misty. Um, and it's been a while, but um, here I'm showing you the last week's Monday recap and some of the numbers. Obviously, um, I got 418 likes, so you now I'm telling you this to remind you if you do, if you don't mind, and you do like this content, please uh, remember to hit the thumbs up, aka like button, aka whatever you want to call it. Um, and again, let's let's try to let's say, I guess we can hit 600 today, before end of day, um, 600 likes, and you know we'll see how that goes. So again, if you don't mind um, and you enjoy the content I cover on these daily videos, uh, please hit the like button it, as it does help the channel. Now, one thing I just wanted to mention to everyone is I've been getting a little dangerous. I know I'm not a chart guy, but I did ask the Discord people, the experts, what the heck is an EMA versus SMA? So I will be putting out some more information on that. But basically what I did I, is I added... Uh, some simple moving averages um, to my chart for this is TNA. TNA is currently at 3705, and I have a 20 day moving average in green, a 100 day moving average in blue, and a 200 day moving average in red. Um, I mean, I know this doesn't mean much to people, but you know, again, I'll get into this later. I have currently have four 100 shares at 42 bucks. And I sold a put last week, I believe for 33 strike, which is actually under the 200 day moving average, which to me um, is should be safe. That's essentially like kind of like a, a, a safe spot because it should not go under there, hopefully. So anything within that red and blue to, you know, is a is a safe spot to sell puts, in my opinion, based on, you know, how I'm treating these moving averages. But that, again, just a quick update is I'm going to start to play with simple moving averages going forward. And I'll try to, you know, keep you guys in tune with what I learn. All right, so let's get to the spreadsheets. So heading into this week, we have Tesla, obviously. Uh, 260 synthetic, not going to be uh, too exciting here because it expires on Friday, August 16th. 23% away from the strike price of this synthetic. So, you know, we'll see. I mean, obviously, the damage is in, in baked into the net asset value. So it's not going to be a surprise. It's just going to be a, a taxable event. So they will take the loss at some point. The only question is how much. And then obviously, same thing on the 265. My guess is they'll probably start to do it earlier in the week and then go from there. All right, so what about strikes? Well, they have two different strike prices. Um, the biggest position, 33,000, 23 contracts, 20750 strike, 3.75% out of the money. And then 1,315 uh, contracts, 210 strike price, 5% uh, five, 5 out of the money. So these positions are, I mean, the strikes are tight. So I don't know. If Tesla goes up 5% today, okay, we're capped, right? End of story. But again, when they made these trades, um, their annualized yield was anywhere from 59 to 70, 76%. Their IV is 49%. So yes, yeah, slightly aggressive, more aggressive than they should have been. But again, of course, the timing of the trade matters and we don't have that. So... But either way, we are where we are. Uh, so let's hope that Tesla, I mean, again, we have the synthetic that expires 816. Those are at 260, 265. So those are losing money, right? Now these strike prices, um, again, it, it it all depends. But for the, for the most part, the synthetic is a, it's gone, it's over. We lost money. So we have to just focus on the weeklies at this moment. And we're kind of rooting for Tesla to stay below um, 207.50, worst case 210. Reaction, again, I just, I'm playing around with images, so I threw a nice little cyber truck on there. Wanted to get your thoughts on that, by the way. Do you like the way it looks? I, at first glance, when these things came out, I'm like, this thing is 
ugly, but it's growing on me. Um, I'm not like, I'm not some Tesla lover. Uh, I don't like electric vehicles. I don't want an electric vehicle, but I do love the way Teslas look. So this, this model is growing on me. I don't, I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, payment information, we covered this on, you know, Saturday, but I know people kind of want me to, you know, go through it again. So we have a synthetic loss of 6.9 million. That will grow, of course. So we're going to be focusing on short call income for Tesla this month. It's at 11.9 million, which is a 24 cent per share. And that comes to an estimate of $1.68. Obviously, you know, that will change as we plug in the numbers. I'm going to add three more days into the daily income calculation. And this number tomorrow will be properly uh, reflected. Outstanding holdings. Uh, what are we looking at for the synthetic? Um, yeah, over $200 million. We're going to probably take the hit. If Tesla has a massive recovery today or this week before they close the synthetic, then yeah, it could go up a little, but they're not going to hit those numbers. So it really doesn't matter at this point. Uh, but the net asset value of Tesla is 654 mil. Uh, the NAV is 1310. Trade price is 1312. And before you get all angry that they're losing money on the synthetic, remember that just tracks the underlying. So it's really just the timing of the expiration and how it works out. So really, you know, it doesn't as you know matter as much as you think because they can't control it. They can't control the movement of the underlying. And the synthetic basically does that. So, of course, there's timing issue. You know, sometimes their timing is off or or it's good. It, it all depends when they enter the synthetic or when they exit the synthetic. Um, but, you know, basically it's out of their control because it's the movement of the underlying. All right. So that's Tesla. Let's go to uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA has a 115 synthetic position. This expires on September 20th, which is 40 days away, and they are 8.91% away from that. That strike price. Um, go to the August tab. What do we got expiring for this week? Well, we got uh, one strike price. So keep it simple. 86,790 contracts, 111 strike price, 5.97% out of the money. That's tight. That Yeah, that is tight. 73% annualized. Okay, 30 day IV, 69%. So, you know, it's kind of in line with what, they're, what they say they do, which is try to yield on an annualized basis what their IV is, or, or at least strive for that. So that's what they're doing. And again, essentially 5.97, or we'll just call it 6%, is that number. So... With five trading days, how will that do? We don't know. The market's been pretty crappy lately, so this may be safe. But if it has a crazy recovery this week, then we're crap out of luck. All right, so reaction. Nope, I mean, it's Monday, so what do you want, right? Uh, I think we said NVIDIA fund manager, didn't he cut out early for the weekend? He's ready. He's ready for Monday. I'm not. Are you? All right, so... August income, no synthetic income, short call income of 14 million. That's 37 cents per share. Again, throw it into the estimator, which will get corrected probably be, you know, by Tuesday or Wednesday. This should be a little more accurate. But we're looking at a 257, 134% yield, which would be nice. It'd be awesome, actually. Um, but here we are. Where's the synthetic at? You know, it doesn't really matter because it expires uh, in late September. But right now, the uh, put part would cost $129 million to close, and we'd get about $46 mil for the call. And then, obviously, here's the loaner weekly call for the week. We'll see how this plays out. All right, so that's it for NVIDIA. So now we will go into Kony. So crypto 250, they closed that sucker. They got a 210 synthetic. This synthetic, just like the NVIDIA one, this expires uh, September 20th, 40 trading days away. And they are 6.53% away from there. So the synthetic is in a pretty good spot right now. Um, as far as calls for the week, uh, there's a lot going on here. Um, they got... I don't even know where to begin, honestly. I'm going to go from top to bottom. Well, lowest to highest. 
15,800 contracts, $200 strike price, 1.89% out of the money. When they opened that position, just FYI, it was 11.79% out of the money. So it did, you know, coin had a crazy recovery. Um, the second, well, that, and also that is the largest position that's being 15,800 contracts. Next is we have a little over what 9,000 contracts, 20250 strike, that's 3.16% out of the money. And then we have 8,750 contracts, 20750, 5.71% out of the money. So we have three different strike prices, which is good, but um, the highest one is 5.71% out of the money which is not really uh, you know, that fantastic. And again, if we look at the 30-day IV, it's 69%. And these annualized yields are all you know, above that, um, some of them a little more aggressive. So again, sh are they too aggressive? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know what's gonna happen this week, but over the weekend, crypto was kind of tanking. So reaction is, uh, yeah, down, down we go. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, synthetic income, it's a loss, 50 mil. Hopefully they can uh, turn that sucker around. Short call income, 12.4 mil. That's 30 cents per share or an estimate of 212, 165% yield. Again, don't take this you know, into consideration too much. Um, take a look at my uh, Wednesday morning video. And I, like I said, I think that would be a full week. So the estimate would make a little more sense at that point in time. All right, so outstanding holdings. Again, they got their synthetic, no reason to talk about that. And they got the three different strikes. No reason to talk about that. But the net asset value of this fund is 631 mil. The NAV is 1534, trade price is 1537. So if, obviously, if coin goes down today, uh, Coney will go down with it as well. And then this net asset value and the NAV will continue to go down. 15 is pretty low. It's really low for uh, Coney. It's, I, don't, I don't know what the lowest price was, but I mean, this has got to be uh, this got to be it. But uh, we'll see if it can ever recover. It's not easy for these funds to recover. Most of you know that. Um, all right, so last but not least, we have Misty. Uh, they have a 155 synthetic. Again, it sounds so weird saying such small numbers, um, but again, MSTR did have a forward split not that long ago, so here we go. Um, this, syn this synthetic is expires actually this Friday. It's 12, they're 12% away from the strike price and uh, not looking good. But you never know, five days away, 155 uh, strike. We'll see. So in this example, by the way, we would want, you know, if we want to make money, taxable money, we would want MSTR to go up over 12.66% by Friday. And at the same time, we go to the August tab, we want the opposite, right? We want it to stay below the strike price. Strike price being 141. So again, either way, uh, this week, does it really matter? But if, if it's gonna go over 141 this week, then we want it to go over 155, okay? If you're gonna do it, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna break through the, our strike price, our little 4% out of the money, and you're gonna go over 141, you might as well go over 155. At least, before, you know, hopefully before they uh, close out the synthetic. Because then we can make some actual money on the synthetic too. Even though we would, you know, lose lose our shirts on this. Again, it's up to, I don't know. It's It, it all depends. Like, it, how, what do you guys think of that? Because it is what it is, right? I mean, it, if it goes up, it's good for the synthetic, right? Taxable event-wise, of course. Um... But at the same time, if it goes up and they make a new synthetic, that new strike will be higher and we could lose money on that next synthetic. So again, it's all timing, timing, timing. That's why I really, really wish they can go much further out in expiration date on these synthetics. When you go one to two months out, it's not good like because they don't always go up on that short term. Like if you go six months out, then I could see them always essentially beating that strike maybe uh, at least a better chance of it anyway there's reasons why they can't i forget what it was but 
So anyway, if we look at the weekly calls, 29,750 contracts, 141 strike, 4.16% out of the money. So again, tight strikes is what it is. Uh, it's going to be, you know, either way, we're losing money on the synthetic or we're losing money on this. One of the two are definitely going to happen. All right, reaction, down. Down we go. Crypto's down. Now, okay, so payment-wise, I think we're looking pretty good at the moment. Uh, so enjoy it while it's here. Synthetic income, 3.7 mil. Short call income, 11.1. .1. That's a net income of 14.9 million. Total income per share of 84 cents. Short call income per share of 63 cents. And yeah, forget this estimate. It's not even worth talking about. Um, just wait for uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. So like I said, here, here we go. The synthetic, it's going to cost us around $61 million to close the put. But again, that number is added into the net asset value already. So it just it's just a matter of what you want to settle like on a taxable basis. So do you want to close out? the the weekly call in blue make money and then pay pay your ass off in pink and the, for the put or do you want to actually get that put down to essentially nothing and make money on the call so i mean does it really matter it, it all depends on the damage you'd have to run the numbers what's the perfect what's the happy medium this week where we can go and ma you know capitalize you know the most again the, the likelihood that we're going to make money on the synthetic is, is slim. So we may just want to focus on the weekly call, uh, you know, producing income there. And because, again, that, that's typically where they focus on where they pay us. It's how much they make on the weekly call income. So, all right. The net asset value, I probably confused the hell out of everyone. I kept I was just thinking about that either way. Uh, net asset value is 416.9 mil. The NAV is 23.36. Trade price is 23.37. Okay. So that's the update on all the funds. That's the Monday recap. Now we can talk about pre market. So, pre market, this is as of 5 14 a.m. Tesla is at two, it's up 11%, 0.11%. It's at $200.22. Tesla's up 0.3%. It's at 1316. NVIDIA is up 0.81%, it's at 105.60. NVIDIA is up 1.17%, 23.40. Coin is down 2.4%, it's at 191.58. Kony is down 1.43%, it's at 1515. MSTR is down 3.63%, it's at 130.40. Misty is down, wow, $22 range, it's down 2.52%. It's at 2278 TSLL. Again, this is one I tr trade options on myself. It's up 0.23% today. It's at 864. I now am the proud owner of about 400 shares of TSLL. Cost basis, I believe, is 10 bucks. So if it gets closer to the $10 range, I can begin to sell calls. If it stays below the $10 range, I'll just continue to sell puts until I average down enough where I can sell calls and make a pretty good profit. You know, pre pretty good premium income, I should say. Not profit. Well, either way. TNA, um, they're, I'm also playing options with them, as you saw from the beginning, looking at my uh, kind of pathetic chart. But um, either way, TNA is down 0.89%. I have a $33 put. I believe it expires this Friday. Uh, we'll see how that goes. If that gets assigned, then obviously my cost basis goes down drastically, which is good. But this is a little more expensive, you know, 33 times 100, 3,300 bucks. That's not chump change. So crazy stuff. AMDY is up 0.67%. It's at 1345. AMZY is up 0.37%. It's at 1882. And here we go. Bitcoin, you know, the cause of the Coney and misty downward today is bitcoin is under 60k it's at 58,041 where will it go next who the heck knows it's it's nuts um so it's down 1.96 percent all right so that's the monday recap um just again i reminded you in the beginning but obviously you know the drill um you know if you have any questions or concerns or you just want to make a comment you know leave it down below um 
I will get to it if I can. And then obviously hit the like button if you enjoy the content. If you don't enjoy the content and you made it this far, good for you. Um, I appreciate it anyway. Um, as always, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you were entertained. If not, we will try again tomorrow and go from there. Uh, today, I'll try to get out another video. I'll try to do it right after this, actually, because people have been asking me to talk about Tesla and um, Crash and to see how they've been comparing over the past um, you know, few weeks. So uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, and then hopefully I can get this uploaded on time. All right. All right, guys. Um, again, uh, well, keyword, almost forgot my keyword. Good damn. Um, so keyword is, it could be, we have two options. We have freaking Monday or freaking Bitcoin. So, uh, I guess we'll have to go with freaking Bitcoin because who knows? It seems like it's been read all, you know, at least over the past, you know, late weekend, Sunday at least, and then today it's still read. So today's keyword, if you made it this far in the video and you want to prove it, is freaking Bitcoin. Although freaking Monday is just as good because I am not ready uh, for a full week. All the, but uh, actually, I'm off Wednesday, so it's almost a full week. But either way, um, but yeah, if you made it, you want to prove it. Just type in. Freaking Bitcoin, freaking BTC, freaking crypto, freaking Litecoin, freaking Shiba Inu, freaking whatever coin you invest in, you could say freaking because if Bitcoin's down, I'm sure they're all down. All right, now I'm out of here. Have a great day. Later.